Hi, I'm Malcolm McKee, District Commissioner at Leatherhead District Scouts. On this channel we've been looking at skills you need for the Scout Pioneer Activity Badge and we've already looked at four videos. Knots you need for pioneering, lashings for pioneering, rope work for pioneering and using the Moors Kahansky flip-flop windlass as a lever to move heavy objects. In this video we're going to be looking at putting it all together to make bigger projects. So what do you need to get started? Well, you can use any sorts of sticks, garden canes, pencils, or anything lying around the house. But the really good news is that B&Q is now open. So I went down there, queued with everyone else yesterday, and I managed to get some 12 meter, 12 millimeter doweling rod like this, and some polypropylene twine like this. And it comes in 2.4 meter lengths, so I've cut it down into more sensible lengths for desktop pioneering, uh, and I've also cut this into, into one meter sections. The most basic sort of project you can start with is something like this. All I've done here is taken two longer sticks and four shorter ones and I've used a series of eight square lashings to make this lattice shape. And it's, it's quite robust and the thing you might use this for is a raft. So in full scale you might lash a couple of barrels but I've got a couple of tin cans like this that you put under these places here and if you were to take a bit of string and just lash around the, the two cans like that or barrels of full size then you get that sort of raft structure where you've got the buoyant bit and the frame that people sit on and this is the sort of thing you can use for action figures um, or anything else at a model scale to show how this might work the second structure is the A-frame so all this is, is the shear lashing at the top and two square lashings at the bottom. And this is useful if you wanted to make a ladder. So you could have a series of shorter sticks lashed across the middle there. Or something like a drawbridge. You could lower it and raise it. It's also really useful as part of a, a bigger construction. So you can make a number of these and lean them together. Um, or they're useful for supporting a rope bridge. But these are a basic component. The third structure is the tripod. So we looked at the figure eight or tripod lashing, which you do at the top. And then there's a series of six square lashings around the bottom. And this is also a really robust structure. It's, it's hard to communicate just how robust this is. So this is useful as a base if you wanted to um, make some sort of crane structure to support the top for moving things around. It's also useful for lifting heavy weights. So if you wanted to extract something from the ground or lift the engine out of a car or something like that then you would place this over the top of the weight you were going to lift and then using some sort of block and tackle system you come down the middle. So I know this sounds a bit like play school or Sesame Street but the square, the triangle and the tripod really are the basic building blocks and if you need to revise any of the skills used to tie the square lashing, the shear lashing or the tripod lashing then you should go back and look at the lashings for pioneering video and really get good at those skills. In this next project, I'm gonna make a model of what's known as a monkey bridge. And this illustrates two concepts. Firstly, in these A-frames, I've tied the shear lashing not quite at the top of the A-frame, which means I've got some space above it to use in my pioneering project. And this is common with both the shear lashing and the tripod lashing, where you might want to do something above the shear lashing. Second, I've made two almost identical A-frames. And these are going to be at opposite ends of the bridge. So the way you normally do this is you have an anchor point at each end. So for this model, I've got this stick at the end of my desk pretending to be a tree. Um, and I've got a heavy box on my desk just out of shot. So a monkey bridge is normally made with three long ropes. And the first thing you do is you put a clove hitch around the top of each of your A-frames. So I'm just gonna do that now. So I'm making a clove hitch, putting around the top of the A-frame and pulling tight. then carefully measuring the distance where I want the next one 
put a clove hitch around that. So you can see this is the basics of the bridge. That rope I've just attached to the top of the A-frames is the one you walk along. Just out of shot, I've got a, a heavy box, so I'm just going to anchor that using a round turn and two half hitches. And then I'm going to do the same at the tree at this end. So that's the basics of it. This relies on enough tension being in that rope. And so in many cases you'll find you have a block and tackle or other sort of mechanical advantage to get enough force into this rope to keep the bridge upright. The other two ropes you use are to act as handholds on the bridge. And what you do with these is you do two more clove hitches around the tops of the rails like this. Just want to make sure I get this in the right place. I'm just going to fill in the one in the other side as well. And you can see if I just borrow a little action figure like this, the way you'd set this up is the action figure would be standing on that rope and holding the other two. It's kind of difficult to, sh to stick in his hands, but you get the idea. And this sort of project we'd normally build across some sort of river, or if there was a natural valley, you could build it across the valley. Now, for scouts to access the ends of this, you can see this end quite clearly. Um, sometimes if you're building this at scale, climbing up to the top won't be easy unless you put a series of ring, rungs up to climb into the middle there. So this is a, this is a pretty nice full-scale scouting project, but also you can build it in model form on your desk pretty easily. Here's another example of a project for taking your skills further. So as you can see on this tripod, again I've tied the tripod lashing just over halfway up the tripod, leaving the ends of these sticks to stick out. So what you could do with that is put a platform up there to act as some sort of watchtower for people to stand up there. What I'm going to do in this case is secure another stick upright between these three sticks to act as a flagpole. And what this means effectively is you get a flagpole that's twice as high as the length of the sticks you have access to. Finishing this off, relies on the upright stick being attached to each of these three sticks in two places. So I'm going to use two separate ropes for that. And to start with, I'm just going to attach a clove hitch to the end of the stick that's going to be our flagpole. Now this has to hang equidistant from each of these three sticks. So I'm just going to take my time to tie, the, tie this rope around each of these three sticks equally so that at least this end is, is suspended right in the middle. 
Now attaching these strings can be a bit of a fiddly job, but hopefully you can see now I've tied a string to the upright that's going to be the flagpole and then tied it to each of the three sticks that are at the top of the tripod and it's suspending it there. But at the moment the flagpole's still wobbling around so I'm going to need to attach a second rope higher up the flagpole to make this work properly. And now you can see that after a bit more fiddling around I've managed to secure ropes at the, at the bottom and at the top and as you spin this round you see this is now the classic free floating flagpole at the top of a tripod. And once again I've just zoomed right out now so that you can see this is now a free standing structure and it's quite robust. You can pick it up by almost any point of the structure and it doesn't break apart. And you can see that, uh, imagine you had pioneering poles that were a certain length, you could build a flagpole that was about twice as high as that length. And so that's it for this video. And in fact, this series of videos on the Scout Pioneering Activity Badge. We've looked at all the basic skills you need and put them together to make scale models of some larger scale scouting projects. You can have a go at these projects or you can find lots more on the internet to have a go at. So until next time, stay safe and keep scouting.